Let's say I want to brainstorm ideas for a new product in an area that's trending in 2024. Putting that into Perplexity AI, it's going out to get real time trending data and then using AI to filter and present that in a nice, clean, simple way. And it gives you some great ideas. I like this idea of a tech-enabled dog collar. Let's dig into that a bit more. I've been using Perplexity AI extensively for about a month now. And it's one of those products, the more you use it, the more you want to use it. And I find it especially good for business brainstorming, research, and planning. You can think of Perplexity like a combination of all the best features of ChatGPT and Google. Well, let's dive in and I'll show you all the features of Perplexity AI with some real business examples. And this organization feature you should start using right away is called Collections. And this is where you can group your conversations together. At the top here, it's got an Add Collection button. Just create a new collection. Let's call this one Dog Collar Product Ideas. And then you can add an AI prompt. And what this does is adds it to the conversation. You don't have to type it in every time. It kind of knows what you're trying to do in this collection. So we'll say we want unique ideas for a highly sellable dog collar. The way in our collection, it's giving us some really good suggestions. Like it's saying, are there any specific features or functions that make a dog collar stand out in the market? Let's click on that one. And now it's gonna go out to AI and the internet and come back with some really good ideas. So it's talking about smart technology, such as GPS tracking, humane training methods, which is a big thing personalization, etc. And this actually gives me an idea. What if I wanted to have a dog color that had an air tag in it, but also had a metal engraved name tag. So that's what that idea. Let's turn on the co-pilot toggle. And I usually put this one on and this creates a more interactive experience. Like it'll ask follow-up questions that if he doesn't understand the request exactly. And so let's say I want to create a color with an air tag and a custom engraved metal dog tag. Okay, so now it's gone off to, to the internet to search for this. And it's telling me that it actually already exists. But then it's going a step further and kind of telling me what are some enhancements I could do that can make my offering better than the other ones. And you can also pass it in links to products. So I'm gonna pass this Amazon link to this similar product. And this is crazy powerful. It's actually gone through that Amazon listing, looked at all the reviews for it and came up with the top things that need to be improved or that customers gave it a low star rating for. So for example, the ability to have a glow in the dark option and also the ability to have double-sided engraving. So some things I never really thought of, but in my discovery process are really helpful. As you can see, you very quickly get some very good ideas out of this. So with that nice clean UI and then the multiple tailored responses, it really feels like you're building a mind map, a nice AI powered second brain. It also works great to do research on how to get new customers if you're a smaller service-based company. Let's say I run a successful heat pump business. What are techniques to acquire new customers and boost spend per customer? And again, it's gonna come back some really good ideas. One of them I didn't really think of was doing a customer referral program. I actually recently got heat pump myself and I love it, but I don't really tell many people what the company I use unless they ask me. But if say I got hundred bucks for it, I would definitely re recommend them way more. That's actually a really interesting idea. And now I asked it, what are some examples of successful social media marketing campaigns for heat pump businesses? And again, this is really good results. It's actually finding examples. Like in this case, it's a, a heat pump company that spent about 9,000 pounds to do advertising, which generated 1.5 million in revenue. And then it gives you the source right here. So I can just click on this and it takes me right to the article it came from. So now I can go through in more detail and get the key points of why this was so successful. And I find that type of discovery has become really hard with Google these days. With all the sponsored content and clickbaity stuff seems to rise to the top, finding good quality articles like this has really been a challenge. It seems like this perplexity algorithm has really figured something out here. It'll also show you good quality content from social media sites like LinkedIn and Reddit. And it does a really good job of filtering through the garbage on some of those sites and just bringing back the good stuff. And everything I showed so far, you can do with the free plan. But if you want to upgrade to the pro plan, it gives you some nice features. And by the way, if you want to upgrade and go to the pro plan, just click on the first link in the description. You'll get 10 bucks off your first month. And one big difference with the pro plan is you get more co-pilot conversations. So if I hover over it now with the pro plan, I got almost 600 left for today. Whereas if I just had the free version, I'd only get five per every few hours. The other thing with the pro version is you can attach PDFs. And the cool thing is it takes your PDF as a source, but it also gets other sources to kind of enhance the data. I think it does a really good job with this actually, even better than ChatGPT does. And also if you're a technology company or you're an AI enthusiast, once you have the pro version, you get this playground option. It gives you latest and experimental models you can use. For example, Meta just released the open source code llama, 70 billion parameter model. So now we can get this to generate us code, similar to like ChatGPT works, but now we can use all the different models and it runs really fast. But my biggest worry with perplexity is that it's not gonna last. Once people start discovering how awesome it is and start using it at scale, I'm worried the big players might just buy them out or they'll get sued out of existence. And that's because one of the reasons it's so good is because it's really zen-like experience on a website with no ads. 
But in this ad-based internet world, all the content that comes into perplexity, all those copyright holders are gonna wanna cut eventually. But for now, we're all good. We can enjoy perplexity. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a like and leave me a comment with any questions. I hope you're having an amazing day and I'll talk to you in the next one.